Hi, my name is Max. I have Asperger's Syndrome. This video is the first in a series of videos where I address the various symptoms of AS and give vivid examples of these symptoms from my own life. This video can be useful for anybody, but above all, this video is for anybody who has ever encountered another human being with AS. Whether you have a personal relationship with somebody who has AS or you've only met an AS sufferer once, I hope these videos will help you appreciate the true difficulty of living with the syndrome. I'm doing these videos not because I am seeking pity. I'm not seeking pity. Please do not go out of your way to offer it. I am doing this because I know there are a lot of young boys and girls who have the syndrome and do not know they have it. I wasn't diagnosed with AS until I was 18, and being undiagnosed can lead to confusing, embarrassing, and sometimes traumatic experiences. Experiences which are not just unique to me. In fact, they afflict the majority of people who have AS. If I had known when I was younger that I had the syndrome, I could have saved myself a lot of grief and lived a much more fulfilling, productive life. That's not to say I don't lead a happy life now, but I think we can all agree that by addressing these types of problems earlier, we can spend much more of our life feeling fulfilled and feeling productive, especially considering we have such a short time on this planet. To begin, I wish to address what is probably the most recognizable symptom of Asperger's Syndrome, lack of eye contact. Like many symptoms of AS, it is unknown what exactly makes it difficult for Aspies, as we call ourselves, to look people in the eye. It's reasonable to assume that this comes down to pure social anxiety and it is something that can be overcome, but that is not entirely the case. While social anxiety is part of it, looking people in the eye is neurologically offensive to a lot of Aspies. In other words, there are certain things regarding eye contact that are in our control and others that are not. For example, you can coach somebody with Asperger's to go from not looking at somebody's face whatsoever to being able to look at the bridge of somebody's nose for a few seconds before having to look away, giving the illusion of eye contact. Nevertheless, it's nearly impossible to get people with Asperger's who have this symptom to completely overcome it. Sure, you can pressure and force somebody to keep going until their behavior is to everybody's liking, but doing that is like trying to force a square peg into a circular hole. Maybe with enough force you can do it. But as you stand back and look at your effort, it seems very artificial and forced, and all of that labor might as well have been for nothing. It's the same with eye contact. You could probably force an Aspie to make eye contact, but a lot of the time we just end up looking like this, with sweat dripping down the back of our necks. To put it simply, you can try to encourage Aspies to improve with their social skills, and in some respects they really can. However, there will come a point where your reasonable expectations become impossible, and what you'll be asking will be akin to asking a human being to turn into a mermaid. You can teach a human being to swim, but you can't teach them to grow gills. With that introduction out of the way, I will now provide examples from my own life when not being able to look people in the eye has been emotionally taxing. These examples will range from minor inconveniences to traumatic ones. Once again, I do not desire pity. I only desire to present the truth of how bad things can get from time to time, in the hopes that I may boost the general population's awareness. One thing that will happen after being diagnosed with Asperger's is a rush of memories. Memories that will take you back to various points in your life where your symptoms arose and caused you great distress. Granted, there is a positive euphoria that occurs when you are diagnosed, almost like when you find one puzzle piece that fits another. However, there is also a profound resentment that almost completely neutralizes that positive feeling. Allow me to explain. When I first found out I had Asperger's and I recognized that difficulty making eye contact was a symptom, hundreds of past examples flooded my mind. For the sake of time, however, I'll only select a few. The first time somebody pointed out that I didn't look people in the eye while socializing was during a grade 11 parent-teacher interview. My drama teacher had nothing bad to say about my performance in the class except for one thing, that I didn't look people in the eye while talking to them. When he said that, it, it was a revelation, but a minor one at that. I said to myself, wow, I guess I don't look people in the eye when I talk to them. Okay, whatever. However, due to my unfamiliarity regarding social cues and their importance at the time, I just passed off this criticism as a trivial nitpick that I could eventually fix. So I don't look people in the eye, all right. Then, when I started making a conscious effort trying to look people in the eye, something weird happened that I couldn't explain. After one or two seconds of looking somebody in the eye, the center of my brain started to shake. Then, I noticed if I held eye contact any longer than two seconds, my head began to quake, like physically shake. Naturally, I would have to look away immediately because it would be embarrassing to look somebody in the eye while your head shook like a flag on a windy day. It wasn't until a couple of years later that I found out this problem is a symptom of AS. 
When I was diagnosed, I started doing research on the eye contact thing and realized how important eye contact is in any social situation. I learned that not making eye contact makes other people feel a wide range of negative emotions. They might feel disrespected or undervalued or ignored. As well, they might think that people like me are pompous or arrogant or cold or just generally not caring because we look like we're in another place because our eyes aren't focused on theirs. And then, while doing my research, I had another revelation a much more horrific one. I thought about the hundreds of people throughout my life that I have ever talked to, and for the past 18 years, I was inadvertently making them feel negatively about themselves or negatively towards me. Along with the other symptoms of Asperger's, I finally understood why people would act like assholes towards me for no reason, including my own friends from time to time. I finally understood why people would make fun of me for roaming the halls at school with my eyes constantly fixed on the ground. 1,000 different memories involving social interaction throughout my entire life rushed into my brain at once, and all I could feel was this profoundly paralyzing, seething self-hatred. I felt this despair for the hundreds of people I unintentionally offended, and who most likely now view me as a socially awkward, irritating, pompous prick. And you know something? I know this is how people view and viewed me. This wasn't just paranoia. You want to know how I know? One thing people will often say about Aspies is that we often act like aliens, like we're from another planet. Get this. You know how in your grade 12 yearbook there are designations given out to your classmates like most likely to be a millionaire or most likely to become a famous comedian? You want to know what yours truly was voted to be? With God as my witness, this is the honest truth. I was voted to be most likely to be from another planet. Can any of you begin to imagine what it felt like to find out towards the end of high school that your peers viewed you as this euphoric weirdo and nobody ever said anything to you? And that's the thing, you know, nobody ever spoke up. And there were people that knew. For example, when I told my friends at the time, almost all of them said something to the effect of, oh, well, that explains why you are the way you are. My guidance counselor at school, when my mother spoke to her on the phone after getting my diagnosis, the counselor said to her, oh, I thought he's been getting treatment for Asperger's for years. That is what she said. And don't even get me started on talking to girls, okay? That's a whole other video. Oh, by the way, speaking of my parents, I don't know what's worse. The fact that everybody knew and didn't say anything, or the fact that my parents didn't know and assumed that all of my bad behavior and lack of social skills was due to a lack of character on my part, laziness, or a lack of willingness to face adversity. Granted, I understand why they probably didn't know what was going on, and I'll discuss that in part two when I discuss another symptom called selective mutism. Nevertheless, my own parents were so inclined to blame my faults, be it eye contact or other Asperger's symptoms, on me being a spoiled brat or something else. And in some respects, they continue to do that to this day. With all this information in mind, you guys can probably understand that the natural outcome of these revelations was a suicidal self-hatred, rooted in resentment and depression and hopelessness. Knowing that this has been my unknown affliction for years, and that there's very little I can do to change the issue, what else can you do but contemplate suicide? And that suicidal ideation continued on up until very recently. For example, I once tried to intern at my country's public broadcasting corporation, the CBC. I didn't get the position, and when I called the interviewer afterwards to find out what I did wrong, he said the following, and I swear on my mother's grave that this is the truth. He said this, Well, you have all of the qualifications, but you didn't look us in the eye during the interview. I swear, that's what he said. Despite my best efforts to look them in the eye, despite my awareness of how important that was, I couldn't overcome it. That feeling of brokenness, that feeling that you're a square peg constantly trying to fit into a circular hole, that constant barrage of failure to conform, like I said, a logical outcome is suicidal ideation. Thankfully, despite my family's cluelessness, they helped me get the resources I needed for emotional support, medical support, and you know, many other things as well. I'm still dealing with various issues that are attributable to Asperger's, like finding full-time employment and maintaining social relationships, but I'm also very blessed. I have a girlfriend who is as beautiful as she is smart. I have a job where many Aspies do not. I have a family who loves me. I live inside a warm house and I have three meals a day. Despite the adversity I have faced, I have come to learn that I am valuable and I can be a functional individual in this society. I have learned that 
more than other people, I deserve to be happy for the tribulations I have suffered through. There are resources out there to help people with AS, but I won't sugarcoat reality for you. Those resources dwindle once you cross the age of 18. So I ask those of you who are watching this video, instead of offering your condolences in the comment section, I'd much rather you share this video with somebody to spread awareness. Share it with somebody who might have AS or somebody who might know an AS sufferer. Maybe somebody who has a young daughter or son that displays symptoms of AS. That way they can get help earlier and they can save themselves from the various traumas I have suffered through. Anyways, that's it for this video, but before I go I want to recommend something. If you think you know somebody who has Asperger's Syndrome but they don't know they have it, present them with this quiz. It's called the Autism Spectrum Quotient. It was created by psychologist Simon Baron Cohen and his team at Cambridge's Autism Research Center. Basically, you answer 50 questions and your final score determines determines whether or not you have AS. If you have a score between 26 and 31, there's an 80% chance or greater that you have AS. For the record, my score for this test was 37. This test is not an official diagnosis and should not be treated as such. This test is made to encourage people who might have been wondering about whether or not they have AS to seek out an official diagnosis. Until next time, my fellow Aspies, just remember, you deserve to be happy.